But what do you think about your past self and where you are today in terms of your development and, and thinking of complex issues? And do you look back on your college self and go, ah, that guy was, you know? <laughs> Or do you say no? There, there's something that was here. I mean, how do you how do you think of that? It's an interesting question. Um, first of all, I, you know, I came of age at the very beginnings of social media, right? Like when I got accepted into college, um, I was so excited to get my admissions packet because it had you could create your college email address. And then you could sign on to Facebook because Facebook only allowed if you had a .edu email only from certain universities at the time. So like the coolest part about getting into college was being able to make a Facebook. Um, uh, and I remember how scandalized I was when they added photos to Facebook. I was like, wow, you're ruining the whole thing. Oh, this is what is this, MySpace? Um, so, <laughs> that's a joke that is going over the heads of most of the audience. It's okay. Google it sometime or whatever you guys yeah. do now. Um, <laughs> Make the like dad jokes like I'm too old for the internet. Um, I guess so. But uh, you know, one thing. The reason I'm saying all this is that you all, the generation who's in college now, in particular, um, everything that you say, everything you post, is there forever now. In a way that like that is very foreign and new. Um, and you know, 16-year-olds and 19-year-olds are not always thinking about, maybe in 10 years I'll run for elected office. I wonder if this uh, is going to be something I'll be proud to have said <laughs> on the internet. Um, but that's real, and it's, I think it's a, uh, an unfortunate aspect of the way the internet works right now. And I, um, I am. Uh, it's distressing in some ways. Um, you know, for me, this was a this was an op-ed I wrote for the school newspaper. Um, the truth about I me mean, to answer your question, the truth about that piece is that the the degree of nuance that I expressed in the op-ed that I wrote when I was nineteen was like so vastly higher than the degree of nuance I could express as a political candidate seven years later, uh, or that is really available to me in political discourse a lot of the time now. Um, uh, like the issue of uh, registration of sex offenders is a really complicated one. Um, and there are ways in which uh, it functions very poorly and really harms the lives of people who are trying to rehabilitate themselves, right? Um, and as you saw in the film, I was maybe trying to like find a way to have that level of nuance when I'm on the phone, right? I'm like figuring out how to wordsmith my response to all this. Um, and. The trouble is that campaign environments are not places for nuance. Um, uh, voters have very little information, and they're going to retain very little information. Um, and you have to just be very clear and straightforward and direct. And if you seem like you are wavering or you have a couple of different things to say about an issue, it can get bad fast. Yeah. Um, and I've. I find in the policy making space, there's more room for that now. Like I feel like as an elected official, I can take on these more nuanced issues in a different way. But certainly on the campaign, um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of room for gray. Mm -hmm.